In this video, I wanted to talk about the uh, gen server architecture. Sure. Okay. Um, so, what we have here from the previous video was we can uh, join a space, we can leave a space, and we can move around, and these messages generate these commands. And these commands are broadcast to all the other clients via the, uh, the space channel or, or the topic pops up, Elixir technology. And we have this idea of a continuous event stream that's made up of these commands. And we can do a lot of things with this. So we can have different listeners. And these listeners can process these events in different ways. One of them can broadcast or just simply just reflect the command that it gets, gets to all the browser clients. So that can be called a reflector. We can have another kind of listener, a subscriber, if you will, that chooses not to reflect every message, but it can batch them up and reflect or push on a set frequency. For example, if you have a client, let's say 10 different clients, 10 people connected, and you're sending 100 messages per, I don't know, period of duration. So you have uh, client one sending 100 messages, client two sending 100 messages. So if you have 10 clients, you're receiving 1,000 messages. And then you would need to send 1,000 messages to each connected person. So that's another 1,000 to the first client, another 1,000 to the second client. If you, if you didn't send your own movement, maybe it would be 900 to the first client, 900 to the second client, but that's, that's a detail. So you're sending quite a bit of different individual messages. But if you batched them, then you would receive the 10,000 messages, and then you could just send each client out um, maybe just 100 messages, but the 100, each 100 messages could contain all 10 clients. So we could call that um, membership. It's just about everybody's presence, or maybe not presence, but everybody's position. But I, I called that membership just to say, where are all my members? What's their position in rotation? So this one we can call a reflector. This one we can call membership. And we can have others. So you can see that this is kind of this like pub sub, except I'm not using uh, Phoenix pub sub because that is intended to go across nodes. And I really just need to set up my own tree and you don't need pub sub for that. You just need to send to individual PIDs. So the infrastructure we have here is that there's a grand supervisor. Supervisor. And this is a supervisor that's going to supervise each cluster uh, dynamically. So under this, we would have a like a regular supervisor for each space. So. For example, here I have a space ABC. When I enter this ABC space, I'm going to start up dynamically. If it isn't started yet, I'm going to start up a supervisor for ABC. So underneath we, we have this regular supervisor. So let's take a look at grand supervisor. Really quick. Grand supervisor just uses the dynamic supervisor pattern. And it will just say, when you call this method, the start space with a space ID, in this case, um, uh, actually the ID is um, something else, B-O-Z-M-S. When, when you do that, we'll just start this uh, 
regular supervisor. That's all that that's all that does. Now supervisor will do a couple of things. So supervisor uh, so you'll get one of these per space. So if we had another space in here like XYZ, when you enter here, we'll call that uh, start space link and it would create another supervisor under here. So you'll get one clustered under each space. What does supervisor do? Supervisor will have a set amount of children. It has two children, one manager and one feature supervisor. So let's just mark that out. So we've got under here a manager and then a feature supervisor. So manager is the kind of the brains of the operation. So this thing is going to have a, a registered name using a via tuple, which we'll talk about in a second. And then featured supervisor will have these listeners underneath it. So it will have um, reflector and it will have a membership and maybe some other ones. So the idea behind <clears throat> this supervisor is it uses the strategy of uh, rest for one, which means this is first and this is second. So if feature supervisor dies, feature supervisor will be restarted. But if manager dies, then both manager and feature supervisor will be restarted. And um, so what does manager do? Not a lot. It will provide some methods that we'll need. Uh, it really is the entry point for receiving those commands. So it takes, it has one process event where it receives the, um, the data, which is, hey, what's the event? And then uh, who's it's coming from? And then it will just delegate that somewhere. So in this process event, in the handle cast for that, it will dispatch them to these uh, features, uh, reflector and membership and so on and so on. It will dispatch them over here. So that means manager has to know about these process IDs. And how does it get them? Well, feature supervisor, which we haven't talked about yet, will start up a known amount of children and in their init process, it will uh, send the message to the manager saying, here, here's my PID, just remember it. And so manager knows the PIDs of all these things. So let's take a look at feature supervisor. Feature supervisor here has four children, two of them of them, which I've talked about. We have membership and reflector, and it will start all of these up with a strategy of one for one. So if any, each of, any one of them dies, just start right back up. So what do they do when they start up? Let's take a look at membership, <clears throat> which is about everyone's position. Membership, when it starts up, it will send the space ID over into the init callback, and then it will track certain details that we need to know for membership, such as uh, who's disconnecting, what are your poses, um, a sort of timer event in order to broadcast on a set interval. So our after event, uh, sorry, our after init process will send a message to the, uh, to save the PID. So we can call the manager. It has a method called save the PID. So given the space ID, the unique room ID, it will say, I want to save the PID to this key in the map sending this PID. And, and now the manager will have that PID. So we can kind of see this process in action. So let's jump into ABC. So we'll enter here. And we're going to grab this space ID so we can get the PID. And the way to get the PID is, let's see, does manager provide us a way to get the PID? Uh, yeah, get the PID. So we can say VXR web space, 
and um, manager git pid and we'll save that somewhere so we have pid this is a manager pid now we can inspect what's in it so we can say sys <coughs> get state and the pid and you'll notice that we have all these process IDs including the supervisor process ID so that's how this tree is set up so once we have grant we have supervisor starting up manager and feature feature starts all of its children each of its children in its init method send its pid back to manager which is the only one that has a name notice I could I could get this just by the name and that's handled with a, a via tuple uh, really quickly I can talk about that which is under manager normally you would specify the name with just an atom or a module but you can also specify it with a via tuple which is a convention for specifying the name of another module so this via tuple I brought in a function I implemented this um, um, module that ha if you implement these uh, functions on this module then you can use this module as a, a via tuple <clears throat> so here we're using the uh, sin module in order to do cross um, multi multi node registration so you'll be able to look up a PID by a string name no matter where it is in the cluster so with that we can use the via tuple and just um, save a name so here we're using our own module and we can even have different kind of scope right now so I could give different names to the different in fact the, um, the scope is required by sin so by default the scope is is manager so maybe I might rewrite this so we don't have to specify this out here um, so that's it that's that's how each of the children are able to look up their uh, manager PID and then give their own PID to them. And so that's the, that's the architecture of the gen server. And the u utility of this, this is a typical kind of pub sub pattern. It's just, we're just, anytime we're sending data in that command format, we're sending it to manager and then manager is dispatching it to each of these listeners. <clears throat> utility of this is that we can have reflector reflect every message for uh, that come in at a certain cadence like oh you, you shot something something was killed maybe those come in more infrequently but movement comes in very frequently movement is going to come in 20 times a second so that's a lot of movement and so I'm batching them with membership so both of these listen to all of these process event messages but membership will batch them out so in membership when we receive the process event we're going to see if we have um, any timer um, sorry I'm looking at the wrong thing this there are two um, references here so we have a reference which is a which is a timer but we also have disconnected which is a map of timers so when is when is this ref called well anytime we're handling a avatar pose if there's a ref if there isn't a ref we'll create a new timer and we'll save it into ref otherwise we'll retain that ref and this will send ourselves a key called uh, uh, send ourselves a message called broadcast to all member poses 
during this time, all new poses we've been putting into the state poses. So we're just getting the most current pose in there. In the broadcast to everyone, over here, we'll push them out to, to everyone because the timer was set. And then we'll clear a flag and then set one more timer in case there's any messages that come while we're sending this. And um, if there aren't, then there's nothing left to do. So that's the utility of this pattern is that we can have different kind of runtime behavior even though these messages are coming in as a stream of events. So this is the kind of event source pattern. In the future video, I'll talk about two other listeners. One is a snapshot, snapshotter, which is a listener that will receive these events and save the current state into the database so that we can, for any latecomers that come to the space, we can, we can retrieve this state from the database and say, hey, this is the current world as we know it. We can also have something that's just journaling all the events. So we can have journal, journaler, which is just backing up all of these events. And that's useful for debugging and playback. So we can have all of these things in concert. And uh, yeah, that's it. So in the next video, we'll probably take a deeper dive into these different uh, listeners.